Hello and welcome. You're watching Money Nine, India's first multilingual platform for personal finance from TV Nine News Network. I'm Sakshi Batra, and on this show, we're going to be discussing all about markets. Well, after this long fall of consolidation, where are the markets really headed, and what should you be really doing with your investments? All of this will be really discussed with a very special guest who will be joining in just in a bit. But before that, let me quickly request all our viewers who are watching us on our YouTube channel to like and subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell icon so that you can. get notified whenever we add a new video and also stay connected with us through all our social media handles and follow us there the handles are given below your screens and also uh, log on to money9.com that's our website which is both in english and in hindi and you'll get to read up all the latest news articles on markets and on personal finance and time now to introduce my special guest to you i'm joined by mr andrew holland who's the chief executive officer of avendis capital alternate strategies and he joins me on market masterclass Good afternoon and thank you very much Mr Holland for joining in well it's a pleasure to have you back on money nine uh, we have been seeing that the markets have been trading quite volatile and they have been pretty range bound in fact in a very rare occasion we've seen that in an entire month of june the markets especially the nifty index that's just hovered between this 300 point range and this is a very rare thing but going forward from your how are you really analyzing the markets do you believe that going forward there's going to be some sort of a deeper correction that could set in uh beat due to macroeconomic factors beat inflation worries or perhaps global events or do you think that the trajectory of the markets continues to uh fairly look strong over the next few months yeah well first of all uh, thank you again for the opportunity it's my it's my pleasure um and um it's a, it's a it's a very tough question you've asked at the beginning because i think um i i think we're in um you know to our minds i think the markets are going to possibly get a little bit more volatile from where we are today uh and there's a number of reasons behind that but let me start off globally um uh, in the first instance one is obviously the fed as you know became a little bit more hawkish uh last month um and that's led to people thinking about you know tapering interest rate hikes what well, interest rate hikes going kind to of the back end of 2022 23 um and the kind of golden lock scenario is this is that you know this will help uh, dampen growth and inflation um and but you're still going to have growth right going yeah. forward yeah so you know interest rate marginally higher in a couple of years that's all okay So that's the kind of the goldilocks scenario of a, of a kind of a soft landing the fed doing everything right no missteps. Um sure. now what could derail that? Um and our view is this is that just as um the economy starts to kind of um slow a little bit which will probably be around mm-hmm. September October. Um mm. and as people go back to work I'm talking about the US and developed markets now. as people go back to work kids go back to school will people save or will they spend more right and our view is that actually you might have seen the best of the spending by then so what would happen is that growth would actually start to fall at the same time that the supply chains which is a problem at the moment all come back online so mm-hmm. you know you the good news is that inflation would go down the bad news is that growth would also go down at the same point so therefore you could have a growth shock or a demand shock which i don't think markets are really factoring in uh, at this present stage so i think that the debate is going to move away from inflation to maybe towards growth which again the market was not uh, is not been thinking about sometimes so that could have a market correction globally because obviously you know valuations are where they are today which is quite high yeah. so yeah. so that's the that's the worry as regards our markets i mean you know we're looking a bit fatigued right it's not really kind of moving up um you know global factors are even though markets are reaching new highs and ours has, has as well at some point yeah um it's not really those catalysts and again there's a number of red flags there right one is the number of um, investors high net worth retail investors actually in the markets at the moment historically that's always been a a time when once markets fall these people head to the exits very quickly and of course the more in the mid and small cap um kind of segments of the market uh two is obviously the bidding small caps themselves 
um, everyone's being painted in the same with the same brush that it's going to be a great everyone's going to be a great company in the future right and that's not going to be the case so you know that that's the other concern but the final concern or red flag is that your market cap to GDP is around 115 percent and again historically when you've looked at that something happens globally or locally to take it back below uh, 100 now it might be in a year's time, it might be in six months' time, but usually you, you'll see some fatigue at that point where the markets just can't move higher. So those are the, the factors which I think, um, um, you know, I think investors should be looking at uh, at the moment. So it could be a market correction, um, but the pain would be I think, felt more in the mid and small cap space where liquidity always plays a, you know, a factor as well. Absolutely. I'll take a cue from what you just said on the liquidity front and ask you next, but very well explained all those points. Uh, and very importantly, you've comprehensively put all those concerning factors and let uh, we'll discuss them one by one each, uh, starting off with this liquidity situation. So how are you looking at the global liquidity situation currently? Some of the surveys, they actually seem to suggest that money managers globally are now reducing their positions as far as emerging markets are concerned. So how do you see this liquidity moving? Yeah, so I think you know what's happened again. If, if you go through, see, if you go through the kind of pandemic um, start to kind of where we are today, I think you know at the beginning of this year, um, yeah. you know, think about India in March, right? Our, our, our number of cases very low. Maybe that was complacency as well. Um, but the feeling was that as the the um, as as the vaccines got rolled out, because Asia in particular are the emerging markets were kind of through some of what was suspected as through the worst. Um, it's not been the case, right? And the number of vac vaccinations have been very slow, maybe apart from, say, Singapore. Yeah. But elsewhere in, uh, in Asia, including Australia, uh, it's been very, very slow. So therefore, that mm -hmm. reopening trade, which you're getting in the US, Europe, UK, has not really come to, to Asia and, and to India. So maybe that's you know, for, for next time around, you know, maybe in two to three months, maybe there's a correction and then our, you know, the vaccinations picked up here and, and, and people will start to, to come through. I think the other factor is that mm. the dollar's been particularly strong at the moment, um, yeah. partly because of the hawkish words from the Federal Reserve um, and also because you know inflation has not really picked up in other countries. So that that's usually a, a case where people you know uh, avoid emerging markets because obviously uh, you've got weak currencies which works against you in terms of returns um, and wait wait for you know for, for more developments in terms of vaccinations and so forth so I think liquidity yeah. whilst it's still there globally is not going to find its way to emerging markets until some of these answers um, are, 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 you know are kind of you know more strongly in the minds of uh, investors about where we are in terms of to the vaccination rollouts. Absolutely. You know, you did raise some of the red flags there that exist in terms of uh, the market cap to GDP, valuations being extremely higher than the historical average, inflation concerns and the rate, uh, you know, hikes or the hawkishness of uh, the US Fed, all of these uh, concerns. Apart from this, I want to say that, you know, some of the experts who we've been speaking with are pointing at two signs of perhaps which are seen as a bubble in the market or a market peak. One is the activity in the IPO market, and the second is the higher retail participation that you also talked about. Now, retail participation globally is now being seen at a record high. IPO activity, and I'm not talking about the small ones, the bigger ones are now lining up in India, I'm talking about Paytm, Zomato, Policy Passat. We're seeing headlines every day that there is increasing activity there. Both signs, how are you seeing them? Are they also flashing red? So, I, you know, I see this as a positive rather than a negative. Um, okay. Because you know, in maybe six months' time, um, or maybe longer, you know, you'll have a whole new kind of um, new, new age economy stocks, which we don't really have in India. I mean, you have them, you know, even if, you know, the Dow's falling, the Nasdaq's going up, right? Because you've got growth stocks, which are disruptive. Um, and you can move away quite nicely from your kind of cyclicals or reopening trades to grow stocks again. Um, mm. And, and these stocks will, will, will be seen as growth stocks. So I think it's not a bad thing, but what it might do is obviously kind of polarize the market a little bit more. 
um, mm. in terms of you know where you make your gains going forward. So I think it's really about a little bit of asset allocation. I don't I don't see it as being a negative. Yes, it might move some money out of um, uh, very short term, it, it, you know, from certain sectors uh, to these sectors as the IPO, IPOs come through. Uh, but generally, going going you know looking further ahead, then I think having you know say a nifty with a number of these stocks in it is not going to be a bad, uh, you know, not, not a bad idea given the long-term prospects for a lot of these companies. Okay, understood that. Now, off we have been also seeing a whole lot of churn in the market. You know, uh, sector rotation is going on. Uh, where do you find opportunity uh, going ahead from here? Which are the areas that you would perhaps bet on even at these record high markets? Where is value still remaining to be tapped on where investors can keep an eye out on? See, so, you know, you've you've highlighted the problem, right? It's been a, you know, the market's just been rotation, rotation, rotation. So, you know, it's been uh, you made uh, last month, you know, part of the month you made good money from IT. The back end you've not made so much good. So, you know, that rotation is hurting a lot of investors. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, there's there's two there's two real themes, right, for India. One is, you know, um, you know, we're a young country, so millennials, um, you know, so huge, um, you know, there's 300 billion of them, that no spending power is going to continue uh, over the next four to five years. So the consumption story is not going away um, for me, that's for sure. Um, and two is, you know, if you look at the economy and try and say, you know, where are the bets I need to take, then I think, you know, looking at where I think the economy is going to go, it's going to be you know, led by a lot of government expenditure. In infrastructure, mm. and I think mm. that's going to be have a knock-on effect and a multiplier effect across many different mm. industries. So I think mm. you know you just have to kind of say, um, despite the rotation, there's a few sectors I like. So the banking sector, you know, if we're going to get to a five trillion dollar economy, it has to be a lot larger than it is today. Right. So the whole financial sector, um, yeah. You know, even asset management companies, insurance, life insurance, you know, we're all going to have more health insurance going forward, I'm sure. You know, are all going to be you know, uh, significantly higher over the next three to four years. So, forget the, the rotational problems in the market because that's just a short term uh, impact we'll have. Uh, but look, you know, long term, the best companies in, in, in the sectors, and it's going to be large caps. There are going to be some, some middle and small caps. Through, but I think the, the bigger the better at the moment. They're the ones who are taking the market share. I've got the balance sheet to do so and the management to, to, to go with it as well. Right, sir. Now, talking about earnings, sir, we are headed into Q1 uh, earnings. Of course, Q4 earnings have been quite good, but the fear uh, is that you know this quarter may actually reflect most of what has really happened right after the second wave hit us. Uh, are you trimming any earnings expectations for this quarter for F522 uh, because of the kind of restrictions we actually saw due to the second wave? No, not really. Um, we were, uh, um, um, you know, we were kind of looking around 20 to 25 percent earnings growth for this year. Anyway, mm -hmm. I know the forecast in the marketplace were you know, uh, 30 plus. So I think anyone that's come down towards our levels anyway. And it seems, you know, talking to the corporates that we have been doing, um, you know, it's not been a, a bigger kind of setback um, than, you know, this time last year, no, not this time last year, but the, when the pandemic first happened. Um, so you're probably not going to see too much earnings um, downgrades, um, okay. unless, of course, you know, a lot of companies are, are not being able to pass on the input costs, which have been rising. But again, you know, you keep hearing of, of price rises in cars and, from cars to refrigerators to any anything, right? So, um, so maybe they're being able to pass it on for the time being. Um, but so I don't think you know we're going to move away from our earnings forecast for this year at the moment. Right, so now uh, you know at this point in time, a whole lot of our viewers and investors in the markets they must be wondering that you know the markets are hovering near all-time highs, but there has been this uh, you know consolidation. There may be an impending correction. They're sitting on this whole uh, chunk of profits. And they must be wondering, uh, you know, is it time for me uh, to exit and take some profit off the table? But what would you really suggest? What's the best strategy that they can adopt? So again, it's a it's a it's a great question and also a very tough one. Um, you know, if I just put it into three categories, if I take your SIPs, 
I would just leave those alone. You know, you're buying at the top, you're buying at the middle, and you're buying at the bottom. So, you know, that's your, your long-term investment, so I wouldn't touch those. In terms of, you know, your existing, say, mutual funds or, or stocks, um, again, you know, you might have a correction, but if, if you're looking at a longer-term view, then, again, if you're very happy with what you, you, you own, um, and for the right reasons you bought them, then, you know, I would continue with that. Um, so it really goes back to the cash available you have now, and should you be putting it into the market? Well, if you're feeling nervous that you know we could have this correction, um, but you still you know don't want to miss out, then we just say you're 100 rupees, you may put 10 in rupees in now. If markets fall, you can increase that um, to to you get to your 100 rupees. Um, but the difficulty is, you know, as with anything, you're saying you know what that timing is. Um, when the market corrects, if you sell out now, would you buy back, back at the bottom or towards the bottom? You just don't know. So I think with existing holdings, um, you could probably, you know, keep 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 what you have. Now, let's just say you buy a stock, right? Or you bought a stock, say, so, you know, six months ago, eight months ago. You obviously have a target price, right? You'd say, I'm buying this at 100 because I think in a year's time it, or two years' time, it could be, you know, 200 or 250 or whatever it might be. If you've already reached that price target, then you might say, okay, maybe my opportunity cost is better elsewhere. I can take some profit off the table. So all of these things you have to think about, but um, it's obviously very different for everyone. Everyone have a, has a different risk profile, but generally I would say, hold your, you know, keep your SIPs, hold your mutual funds and stocks, which you, you, know, you like and for, for, for all the reason you bought them. Um, and with the cash that you have, deploy it um, over time. Okay, well, on that note, thank you very much, Mr. Holland, for speaking with us on Money Night. It's always a pleasure having you with us and seeking all these insights, uh, which are very, very useful for all our viewers and our investors, the first time investors who are still waiting right on the edge to get into the markets. All of these insights are really going to help them. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Market Masterclass for you. We'll keep getting you such interesting conversations, which will definitely help you in your investment journey to take the right decisions as far as your hard money is concerned and when you invest them in the equity markets. For more interesting conversation, you can like and subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we add a video. Also, you can stay connected with us through all our social media handles flashing down on your screen and also visit our website, money9.com. Any thanks for tuning in.